Hi everyone, it is Carrie here. I go by Carnet Creative on YouTube and Instagram, and I go by Carnet Vintage, and I am a seller on Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, and Instagram. So if you love vintage, fashion, styling, and sustainability, you are in the right place, and I would love if you subscribe to my channel to see a little bit more. I have been reselling since I was 11 years old and this is what I love to do. I love to connect people with pieces from the past and bring them joy in the future. So today I am showing you a little bit of my personal collection, a little bit of my personal collection that's currently listed online, and talking to you about eras how I identify eras and a little bit of everything. So actually last night I did a live with Millie and Monica, um, or Monica for her first name, and Millie is her mannequin of course, but we did a live on how to identify vintage. So there I used a lot of these pieces as examples on how I identify vintage and how from my experience that is how I track pieces down, how to spot it in the wild, and how to narrow it down, and especially in the terms of resale. So, a lot of people have been asking in the comments of the video about specific pieces in the background, and even though it was like almost an hour, I didn't get to cover everything, and I wanted to acknowledge the pieces that were in the background, and tell you it's for sale, how to find it, or if it's in my personal collection for right now and it might not be available, but we can just be in all of it too, because I'm just not ready to part with it yet. So, I will walk you from, I'm like, I don't even know what the camera angle is, but this is this side, I'm gonna go on this side first. So, I'm gonna turn it this way, and then right up here is a 1950s hand-painted fit and flare dress. And I don't think this one even has a label. This is unfortunately or fortunately for me in my personal collection. It fits me and I love it. Um, but we talked about how hand painted kind of helps track down the higher end vintage garments and how um, you can tell if they're a little bit older because this one, the gold leaf is actually worn off on it quite a bit. You can also tell from this cotton, it's super um, soft and worn in from age. Also, the style is a fit and flare, so that means that the skirt is a circle, essentially. And then the bodice is super fitted. This halter style is super popular for the era. And then if you go over here, it has a metal zipper. And in the video we went over, if it has a metal zipper, it's generally 1940s through 1960s. Um, it kind of gets tricky, especially for pieces that are homemade. They might have had a metal zipper laying around, and it might be actually a 70s piece with a metal zipper. But generally it's a good way to track that um, era for that. So there is that one. And this piece is actually listed in my personal closet. I'm like trying to work with cords here, but I'll bring her forward. <laughs> and this piece is a cotton and it's a washed blue and it has hand painted fish actually on the sarong strap there and then the top and pretty much all over the dress. It's a really beautiful um, tailored dress for and it's actually 1980s. You'll see here it has little elastic panels and then there is a plastic zipper in the back and then this one because it's so shiny and gold you can tell it's a little bit newer or it, if it was older it would be super well kept and the telling sign here also is that the beads are plastic and not glass so obviously plastic beads were a little bit later so this one I can easily identify as 1980s this is also listed in my closet. I will link the listing below if you're interested. I'm always open to offers as well. And then, well, sorry, this hat box, this was in my personal collection, but I will be listing it. If you don't see it on my Poshmark closet, um, leave a comment down below with your closet name or your Instagram name, and I will send you details for this. But double-sided floral, it's like a tapestry print and then open, it's pretty pristine on the inside. This one's 1960s, 
metal zipper um, and I just don't need it anymore so um, that will be going live soon and then this one this dress was the talk and I knew it was going to be um, for the live video this is a personal piece I actually wore this for my high school graduation party yeah I'm gonna move it back a little bit so you can see but it's a 1960s like picnic gingham cotton and then the back is a beautiful crossover even though I wore it as a halter for my um oh there goes the hook so that's gonna have to be repaired um but it's entirely sequined the zipper is a newer replacement in it because it's an invisible zipper and then it's unlined but entirely sequined and has the original belt and it's just it's maxi length and it's simply stunning so I'll be posting a picture of this on my Instagram soon um, I actually pulled it out of my attic just for this video but it does not have hanger appeal but it is so stunning on um, so I will go through a couple pieces that were on this rack that were catching people's eye and I wanted I pulled like an example so when I was talking about examples, I was talking about 1940s and 1980s, how they're very interchangeable. First with that, there was very popular in the 1940s to have shoulder pads, and it was again popular in the 1980s. Again, these styles for silhouettes were also adapted in the 1980s as well. This one is a 1980s dress. You can tell because the super vibrant, tropical, bold print but these sleeves and the bodice is a very 40s style as well as the gathered waist and these beautiful ruched side panels it's a full length and then even in the um, panels there's a little tiny magnetic weight should be able to find it in here in the abyss of this dress um, fishing it and then it's actually covered in the fabric, but it actually weighs it down so it holds the silhouette really well. That was a very popular um, motif in the 1940s, and I don't even think I noted that in the video. And then the last part of this is that it is a plastic zipper, and you can see if I can get close enough that the teeth are slightly translucent, and that would show that it is a plastic zipper. So, 1980s, the style looks very 1940s, but the fabric is not, and the fixtures are not. But I do have this true 1940s novelty print blouse and you will see that the sleeve construction and the bodice is extremely similar. This one it only has the classic button back but the buttons were replaced since they are plastic and the silk hand painted book print is just simply stunning. This piece is in my personal collection and the last piece is in my personal collection but you can always leave a comment below and if I ever decide to part with anything, I will reach out to you. Um, another thing that I noted in the um, live video was poly. So this was a very popular material in the 1970s and older. It gave the um, elastane or spandex or lycra um, and it gave a bounce back material so it gave a lot of stretch it gave a lot of longevity it also was a great canvas for really bright electric prints and they were also wire dress wire drosher I can't talk washer dryer friendly um, but this is a really beautiful 1970s poly print and I actually so this guy had a ton of pinholes um, throughout so he's a little a mending project for me but I actually went through an embroidery thread and just highlighted the colors throughout in a chain stitch to mend those holes and give it a little more life and there's another blue one so this one will be listed soon um, you can comment down below and I will tag you when the listing is live but this will be part of a different um, line that I am working on so that's a sneak preview for that but it was just too stunning to throw away or donate and that would probably be thrown away after the fact this one was from my personal collection I will be parting with it this was um, well this is a 1970s Vanity Fair dressing gown or robe but I wore this as a duster I wore it just as the top buttoned and then with jeans it has pocket 
and beautiful like a slightly kimono sleeve and then the center button here was actually missing so the yellow is a replacement but I thought it just add a little touch of quirkiness and it's so so lovely this will be coming soon to my Poshmark closet same deal comment down below if you want to be tagged I will tag you in it um, a couple pieces that I did or missed in the um, video were my Edwardian slash Victorian pieces. So this is a early 1910 cotton eyelet day dress or a tea dress. And then it is a midi length with beautiful eyelet details and embroidery. And this is in my personal collection and a personal favorite of mine. This is a Victorian skirt. I believe it was a dress at some point, but this is an example of a confusing piece. So this is an elastic waistband, obviously, and it is also surged. So surging is when you finish the sides. So surging was not a machine that was in the early 1910s or really even into the 1940s. So this piece was either a dress or was a skirt and they chopped it and then added an elastic waistband. So that one could be tricky to identify if you weren't familiar with the fabric or the details on it. And these are a pair of 1920s men's joppers. They are a linen, they have some love. They are part of my personal collection, but a favorite piece is these gathered buckles at the bottom and it has a really, really beautiful like balloon um, flair to that and even like some simple details like the notch on the back so again these are part of my personal collection but these really classic whites automatically um, ring a bell for me that they might be antique so under more inspection that is some of my Edwardian pieces um, 1940s we talked about different fixtures and I'll pull back out this um, blouse to show you when I was talking about surging, if you can look at a piece and you don't see surging, you might see this instead. And these are, the, the little notches on the end here are done with a pair of called pinking shears. So they help finish the fabric and keep it from fraying. So that would be an alternative to see if a piece was more than likely vintage or if it was handmade. These are a pair of 1940s brocade or jacquard trousers. They are a size 14 and they have a very unique fixture and I, they were in my personal collection. I couldn't quite figure out even how to attach them myself because there is a hole here and I'm sure some hopefully will share in the comments below and they loop here. So it's unclear if it goes under, but there's no other Oh, maybe there was a button there. So it goes here, and then there's another button hole for a button, but it's all the way over here. So at some point, it gathers in a strange place, which is quite peculiar. Um, but yeah, it does, like, it has that loop that shows. But um, I don't know much about this piece and how that waistline happens. Um, but I do have the matching jacket, that, but it is um, has some issues on the bottom, so I have to crop it. So this will be a matching set at some point, um, but I absolutely love these pants, and they're so lovely. But I am noticing it's like a tiny little mend here, so you learn something new, I guess. So those are listed in my closet. They are available for purchase another piece that's listed it's 1980s with a very 1940s vibe it's this beautiful black and white marled knit and the label is Bosha Johnson it's a size small but it would fit up to a size large because there is a ton of stretch it is a like almost like knitted on the bias material but there's these lovely like suede scallop details a fun bat wing sleeve and then it's also trimmed in suede as well. So this is super lovely and it has shoulder pads that can easily be removed but are super unique. 
A um, couple more pieces that I will show you. Oh, this was a big eye catcher. This is another personal collection at the moment. This is a 1970s hot pink feather boa trimmed jumpsuit. And embarrassingly enough, I don't think I have worn this yet, but it will be coming and I'm so excited to. I just haven't had the right time, but beautiful tie waist, personal collection. Message me or comment down below if you want to tag if I ever decide to sell it. Um, some fun pieces. Let's see what I have. Um, some great 1980s that's coming to the shop soon. I have some really great 1960s shifts. I talked about this very briefly in the video, so I'll note this. This was a really, really stunning 1960s with beautiful um, woven buttons. And it's made in France, and it's almost like an Hermes scarf print. And super stunning. This will be coming to the shop soon, so comment down below if you want to tag. This is another dress I used as an example. This is a beautiful 1940s organdy dress with the most intricate florals. It's sequin on the bodice. And this was my graduation dress in high school. Um, so this is a part of my personal collection. I don't think I will be parting with this anytime soon, but I do love it so dearly. And hopefully one day it will fit me again. Um, and I mean, I have all sorts of pieces in my personal collection. This is actually my grandmother's wedding dress from the 1950s. I actually took a piece of the collar off. It's really, really starting to dry rot. It has very large areas of discoloration. She thought she had thrown it away. Um, so for Christmas, I actually had a local artisan make a resin um, frame for her preserving the fabric so she could have a piece of that and I also gave one to my aunt as well um, so we could have a little piece of that and obviously it's hard because as a historical lover I want to keep a piece 100% but I know that nobody is going to frame this dress it's unfortunately not wearable at this condition I would love to adapt some of it to be my wedding dress someday um, but it served a bigger purpose and a bigger memory as a piece rather than the entire gown itself. So, unfortunately, I did dismantle that one. And then a couple pieces that I just really, truly love are my 1970s embroidered pieces. These are both from my personal collection. I got this top when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And I still wear it all the time. It's one of my favorites in my summer rotation. And then this I got from a table of trash bags at the flea market and I saw it at the bottom and it was a $4 score and it will probably forever be on my personal collection. Um, I love wearing this with a fun tank and jeans. I have really cool bell bottoms that I wear it with, but it is full maxi length and has beautiful cruel embroidery. And if you don't know what cruel embroidery is, it is instead of like a silk thin embroidery thread, it's used with yarn. So it has really beautiful 3D effect. Um, but I probably pulled about 80 pieces for this haul. I'll turn the camera. That is all pieces that I pulled for this. So there is so much more that is listed in my closet. I currently have almost 500 active listings, so a lot of these are listed. If not, they will be coming soon. Let me know down below what your favorite piece was, and if you want any details on anything or want me to tag you anything, also leave that below. Share your Poshmark closet, your Etsy shop, and I would love to uh, shop it and connect with you. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you enjoyed videos like this, Please like this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe, and you can ring the bell for notifications when I post my new videos, which is every Friday. Um, thank you again so much for watching, and you can follow me more on Instagram as Carnet Creative and Carnet Vintage on all shopping platforms. Bye!